Welcome to the Internet of Things Made Simple. I'm Larry Bohemer. Remember, full episodes start on November 1st. In this preview episode, we explore if a business might be too small to actually enjoy IoT. This started based on a conversation I had with a fellow parent at my son's volleyball game. He owns a business that sells perishable foods in corporate gifts, such as chocolate and fruit baskets, things like that. When I started talking about IoT, he said, those sound great, but my business is just too small to ever use those. When I asked him a bit about his business, he mentioned that it was himself and his wife and some other contractors and part-timers they bring on board, and that he had done some basic exploration about sensors and IoT and just realized that it really wasn't for him. Well, I think actually he might have been looking at the wrong solutions because I believe that no business is too small to benefit from IoT. And we're going to talk about that in a few seconds. Before we get into how IoT can help this gentleman's business, let's look a little bit about how IoT can help any business, regardless of what market you're in or what size of a company you are. As I've said many times, IoT is about information, so that is the first part. But it's only important if the information is delivered to you in a way that you can actually make sense of it and in a way you want to see it. So in the case of a corporate company, they're going to want to see the information put into one of their systems, whether it be an ERP or a CRM or any other corporate system for that matter. In the case of a small business owner, they may simply want a text or an email or even a a Facebook notification, I'm not really sure. It's also only good if the information is useful to them. Waking them up at 3 o'clock in the morning to tell them that their freezer is working fine is not only aggravating, it's not very useful. However, waking them up to tell them that their freezer has stopped working and they're about to lose thousands of dollars in food, now that's of value. The other part to IoT solutions, and it only applies to some of them, is the ability to actually take action. So if you have an issue at at the office, can you actually click a button to fix it? Whether that's letting somebody in, whether that's opening a valve, turning on a fan, if you have that built into your IoT solution, it makes it so much more effective. Now let's talk about three benefits of IoT solutions for this gentleman and pretty much any other small business owner. One, redundancy and continuation. This gentleman mentioned to me that he accepts most of his orders online, which is fabulous. It makes for a much easier acquisition and a much easier experience for many customers. However, if his internet connection to his main office is down, he might very well miss these, and that's obviously going to hurt his business. Having a very simple failover solution, one that monitors the main line, and in the event the main internet connection is not available, can switch over to a cellular connection, allows for a really easy redundant solution. And this is something that almost every business, regardless of why you use the internet, everyone has to have the internet nowadays. So if it's for receiving orders, like how this gentleman's doing, if it's for point of sale transactions, if it's for other kind of communication, having a redundant connection to your internet is good for businesses of just about all sizes. Number two, improved operations. One major expense when you're involved with perishable goods is probably the refrigerator. Whether that's the cost of running the refrigerator, if it's natural gas, more likely electricity, also the maintenance and the upkeep, those kind of things. By having sensors, you get a much better understanding of how the fridge is running, which allows you to optimize how it's used. More importantly though, a lot of solutions use artificial intelligence to actually learn the pattern of how your company uses the fridge, as an example. So if it knows on Sunday that it's very unlikely a fridge is going to be opened, it will know to reduce the temperature to help save cost and save wear and tear on that appliance. That's also the case for other parts, for other machinery as well. If it's cutting machinery for different factories and different woodworking places, you name it. Improved operations is available for just about any business with IoT solutions. 
The third one is peace of mind. And as a small business owner myself, although we've grown a little bigger, I have to admit that you don't take a lot of time off away from the business. You might not be physically there with the business, but you're always thinking about it. It's almost like one of your children. So by having IoT solutions, a business owner is able to have a bit of peace of mind. They're able to know that things really are working, that someone's arrived on site, Um, They can check in on usage, perhaps a device was giving them problems earlier, they can see if it's overheating. All this information is available to any small business owner. And just because you may not have as many equipment as somebody else does, it doesn't mean there isn't value for you. For small business owners, there's multiple applications that will work in the IoT field, but I'm going to talk about three of them right now. Simple monitoring is a term that I've actually coined, and you can just call it sensor monitoring or monitoring if you want. And this is monitoring a single variable. Things like temperature, humidity, did a door open, vibration. This allows you to know key information about something or an area. And you can definitely have more than one of them. So as an example, you might want to know the temperature of that fridge that I mentioned. Maybe perhaps you have a power generator. Using a vibration sensor, you can know that the power generator is on. Another example is door openings. Perhaps you want to know if the cleaning crew has arrived. These things are all done by simple monitoring, and there's some great applications out there for that. Two is vehicle tracking. And you might say, well, I've only got one vehicle. Why do I really need to have it tracked? It's not always about where is the vehicle. It can also be about how is the vehicle being driven? Is the vehicle being idled? Is the vehicle speeding on certain roads? Maybe you want to get reminders for oil changes. You name it. These things are all available using fleet management solutions. And even if you only have one car, they can actually be beneficial. The third one may or may not be applicable to your business, and that's temporary connectivity. If your office is the only place you ever do work, this application might not apply. However, a lot of people have to pick up and move, whether they're doing work on a customer's location, maybe they're going to a trade show, you name it. Temporary connectivity is just as it sounds. It's giving you connections to your key systems while away from the office. The idea is that it can be set up in seconds or minutes, and it allows you to have the same security levels you have in the office. This applies to many different businesses, so I'd be surprised if at least the majority of businesses could not use temporary connectivity. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the concerns that you should have when it comes to IoT solutions for business, as well as some guidelines you might want to follow. Back in a sec. In a couple of the preview podcasts, I actually talked a bit about some of the concerns about IoT. And I'm going to cover that in so much more detail when it comes to the full-length episodes. But for now, I want to talk about two concerns that any business should have before deploying an IoT solution. And those are security and interoperability. And I can't believe I just said that without stuttering. For security, it's obviously a big part of your business in many ways. It's the reason why you lock the door, have an alarm system, and do all those kind of things. What we're talking about here now is improving your data security and how your data is stored. A lot of times the solutions for small business are actually cloud-based and app-based. So you might not be storing the data anymore locally. It's going to be up somewhere in a cloud. That might not be a concern for many people. And based on the numbers of people using social media, I don't think it's a concern for the average consumer but it really should be a concern for the average business owner. They might have security requirements that are a lot different than a consumer. They may have regulations based on their insurance for business. Perhaps that they're storing certain information that might have a financial aspect to it. They may have to worry about security. So you need to ask before you deploy, where is my data being stored and what security precautions are being taken? And that includes not only the data storage, but also the encryption level of when the data is sent back and forth. In terms of interoperability, and again, said it without stuttering, 
What we're talking about here is a lot of solutions that are meant for small business tend to actually have all the components included. And that can be great. Don't get me wrong. Turnkey solutions can be wonderful. However, many times they lock you in so that if you want to upgrade a device or change to a different backend, you're kind of stuck. Maybe that's not a problem for you. Maybe the fact that people are using the Apple model where, you know what, things just kind of work. I don't really care if I'm buying everything from one person. That's fine. But just ask, can I change components? Can I change sensors, gateways, backend system? Can I add more security? Can I do any of these things? If you don't ask, you won't find out. One way to make sure that you're doing this properly is to actually spend a bit more money on solutions and use corporate grade products and software. An example of that was I was at a show and somebody was using a MiFi to transmit point of sale. And all I could think of was, wow, there's no way this meets the security requirements for point of sale. I wonder what they're doing. And those of you are wondering, what the heck is a MiFi? They're a cellular enabled device that basically gives you a portable Wi Fi hotspot as long as you have coverage. And the reason why a lot of people use them are if you commit to a two or three year contract, they're often free, the device, anyways. Don't use those for your business. I know it's tempting. I know you're trying to cut costs. This is not a place to cut costs. Go with an actual proven product for multiple reasons. One, you might be violating the security requirements, especially if you're taking financial payments. So be aware of that. Two, it isn't always about the upfront cost. It's about what's the cost over three, five, seven years. A MiFi last one year, two years, I'm not really sure. An actual cellular modem meant for businesses will last three, four, five times that. So you're buying three, four, five MiFi's for every corporate product you're buying. And what they don't tell you sometimes is that if you need to buy a second MiFi before your contract expires, you're often paying full price. Be warned on that. The other part is that it isn't so much the cost of the hardware, it's the cost if things don't work. And that's where your downtime and your cost comes into play. And what I mean by, what I mean by your cost is, if you're going to a trade show and you're going to invest all this time and then all of a sudden you have no connectivity, you've lost orders, you've lost ability to do different things, there's definitely a cost to your business. Your business is worth it. Use a corporate grade product no matter how small you are. I hope you enjoyed this preview podcast. As I mentioned a couple times, full episodes start on a weekly basis on November 1st. And I do encourage you to look at a couple things we have put up onto the internet. One is our new webpage, the Internet of Things Made Simple.com. The other one is Novatech Knows, as in K N O W S, which is where we have a ton of video blogs, which I think you'll enjoy. Thanks for listening. I'm Larry Bohumer. Take care. <laughs>